Good evening and welcome to our service of Evensong on this, the Sunday next before Lent. A welcome to those of you here in St Mildred's tonight and a welcome too to those joining us from home.
The first lesson is from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Here ends the first lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. 
Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if you wish. I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no, no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Here ends the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
choir will now sing the anthem Sanctus by Schubert. Please be seated. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I would imagine that most of us here can probably recall some precious moments in our lives 
that we have just wanted to hold on to forever. Perhaps time with those that we love the most. Spectacular sights, an awesome sunrise. These fragments of time often hold overwhelming emotions and perhaps deepen a sense of relationship with those around us or indeed with God as creator. In Matthew's Gospel, the story of the transfiguration that we heard just now is placed at the point in which Jesus' life starts to turn towards Jerusalem and all that will take place there. It is loaded with significance. Like Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, Jesus is on a mountain and this precious moment is a recognition of a new covenant with God, a new dawn, a new era. But not too far away from this gilded mountain is a small dark hill just outside Jerusalem. There too Jesus will be elevated. Today, Jesus on this mountain is flanked by Moses and Elijah. In a short while, he will be enclosed by thieves on the hill. Today on the mountain, there is bright cloud and bright light. The hill to come will be shrouded in darkness. Today, Peter is faithful and thrilled on the hill, he will deny and disappear. This is a mountain of glory where all of God's plans and greatness are revealed. The hill will be one of shame, where it seems that nothing good can come, the end of an era. What is all of this for? As the disciples hurry around in their bewilderment, trying to build a shelter, God literally interrupts their busyness with an echo from Jesus' baptism. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. These are words of love and affirmation and a reminder that the most important thing about Jesus' ministry was not all that activity, but the relationship with his Father. Everything he said and did emanated from his identity as the beloved of God. As God in human form, Jesus invites us to recognise something of this patterning in our own lives too. It is perhaps the greatest gift and yet the hardest to receive, to know that you are a beloved child of God, to feel at the core of your being that this is what gives you value over and above your greatest successes and achievements. It can take a lifetime to fully understand this truth. But once grasped, its power is truly transformative. Amen. Let us now come before our transforming God and pray in faith. Lord, bless thy church, that it may reflect thy glory, that it may guide thy people into the ways of love and peace. We pray for the church as it seeks to uphold thy law and to discover thy will, that we may be faithful to thee 
until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. Lord, enable us to proclaim thy kingdom and thy glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a world that so often has lost its way, a world without standards, without direction. We pray for all whose life seems to have no purpose or meaning, for all who are confused and needing guidance. We hold in our prayers to the people of Turkey and Syria, all those who have lost loved ones, homes and livelihoods and for the people of Ukraine, as they continue to live with deadly war on their doorsteps. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, transform our lives by a vision of thy glory. Transform our work by an awareness of thy presence. Transform our homes by a knowledge of thy love. Transform our relationships by our being with thee. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Good Lord, transform our hospitals by thy power. Transform our fears by thy love. Transform our darkness by thy light. We remember before thee now all who need thy transforming power. We pray especially for Stephen Beasley, Tanya Smith, Harvey Bridgestock Perris, Heather Parker, Noel Fogarty, Barry Payne, Gail Payne, Peter Danks, David Bolton, Lalagi Goff, and baby Esther and her family. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, transform our fear of death by our knowing thee. We remember before thee loved ones already transformed in likeness to thy glory. And we pray too for Con Parker, Florence Pickett, Ted Nanini, Christopher Hickmott Arnold, Amy Hyde, Miriam Coxhead, Francis Diprose, Doris Smith, Diane Barrett, and Brenda Eilding, who have died recently. And we remember too Monica Clinch, Zoe Coombe, and Jim Jeffrey on the anniversary of their death. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, change us and we shall be changed. Transform us by thy love. Redeem us by thy grace. Strengthen us by thy presence, that we may move from glory to glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
light of the world, shine in our darkness today. Where there is pain and sorrow, may the brilliance of your love bring joy. Where there is sickness and suffering, may sunshine come after the storm. Where there is greed and corruption, may your radiance scatter the shadows. Where there is hatred and bitterness, may your brightness dispel the clouds. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the world, rise again upon us, we pray, and illuminate the darkness of this world through your life-giving grace. Amen. Amen. Bless us, O God the Father, who hast created us. Bless us, O God the Son, who hast redeemed us. Bless us, O God the Holy Spirit, who sanctifieth us. O blessed Trinity, keep us in body, soul, and spirit unto everlasting life. Amen. 